tonight, a wake-up call for the nation. Body fat, and especially this belly fat, increases the risk of over 10 different cancers. And one leader faces tough truths at the weigh-in. The road is going to run out for you very fast. This is Operation Transformation. You can follow Operation Transformation online at rte.ie forward slash OT. On radio with RTE Radio 1 and 2FM. And you can join me, Catherine Thomas, here every Wednesday and Thursday night. Operation Transformation is about people coming together to make a real and lasting change. And with over 6 million hits on our website, our leaders aren't the only ones seeing amazing results. We're Shampoo, Hair and Beauty and we've lost 44 pounds. Woo! This year, we want Ireland to lose £1 million together. So log on to rte.ie forward slash OT and make your weight loss count. It was another celebration on the scales for Claire last week. But she isn't the only one transforming. Husband Tom has been quietly shedding the pounds too. And this week, he's tackling public enemy number one, sugar. I'm delighted for Tom that he's losing weight. Day one, and by the time we get to the end of the week, I might need to get another job. I just don't want him to lose as much as me. Not very sweet, but I'll get used to it. I'll have to. It's not long before Tom's jar is almost full. And the competition in the Scanlon household is stepping up a gear. We came up with an idea and it is called Operation Spud Formation. That is how much spuds Mam has lost. Like, that's a lot of spuds. This is actually mad. Myself and Claire are, are neck and neck at the moment, both of us are stone last. I'm going to say, no, it's not heavier. They're both the same, they were both weighed. <laughs> I can hardly lift it. There's a, bit of, a good bit of competition now, and Claire is very competitive. This time next week, my spuds will be <laughs> up beyond. Game is on now, really, isn't it? He's after putting it up to me. Uh, so much for it being the taking part that counts. Oh, they're getting going heavy. Have I done it? Do you not find it heavy? No. <laughs> okay. Your elbows aren't even meeting. My elbows are further apart than yours. I'm sure I ended up laughing and he ended up exercising, so that wasn't working for me at all. So, <laughs> I don't know, maybe if we wore less clothes or something, we might put him off or something. <laughs> so well, Claire better get the big guns out, because according to Tom, the winner of Operation Spud Formation is in for quite the prize. The we can beat. Well, I don't mean I don't mean to be together like but we can do that too, but <laughs> Competition notwithstanding, it's clear this couple are a winning team. But that's hardly news to Tom's sister, Deirdre, who was in college with Claire. Can you start to go out together over the phone? <laughs> oh Lord, that makes you sound really weird. I went to Australia. Um, in 98, after we finished college. And I suppose I was touching base here at home. I'd be ringing and back then there was no Skype, no Facebook, no anything. So when I'd ring home here, I'd say to Tom, you know, you might give Claire a buzz and see how are things. So that was the start of it, really. We'd speak in the phone for us. Always like, wouldn't we? Yeah. It was definitely the longest courtship. <laughs> we had to get a kiss like for a long time. It was six months, wasn't it definitely? Yeah, it was. The first thing I noticed about Claire, I suppose, was her smile. She has a lovely smile. I suppose it's hard to put into words how much you love someone or how much I love Claire. Um, she means everything to me. That was in Donegal. That was the time we got engaged. That oh, one. yeah? So we went over to the, the waterfall and I kind of said, this is the right place, but I don't know. My tongue was stuck in my mouth or something. I, I couldn't say anything. It was beautiful. It was fabulous. You know, all we were missing really was the music. But yeah, he waited till we got back to the couch to propose because he nearly bottled it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't nearly actually bottle it. I don't know. <laughs> he wasn't very sure, you see. I was sure, but I was just really nervous. Like, and I suppose, yeah, I suppose my job was a fetch, you might say no. I said yes. I, I love the bones of him, like, it doesn't, you know, I know everything about him. And sure, why would you add sugar to that? Stand by with the spuds, kids. Up you get. OK, Claire, last week you were 16 stone on the nose. Your target was to lose two pounds. And today you weigh... 15 stone, 11 and a half pounds! That is a loss of two and a half pounds! Well done, Claire. What really came over for me this week was the whole family in unity. The strength and the warmth and the connection. You got something in there that's really special and you have a humour that glues you all together. You're an amazing group. I've never thought of us as anything 
more special than anybody else. I suppose we just do what we do. You know, I suppose when Dara died, we had to just totally strip back everything and almost try and start again. As a mother, you have to try and protect the lads. And by doing that, I think your honesty is the best policy there. Because if you're not, I think it all comes back to bite you. But I don't know, I just see us as a regular family running around and trying to do our bits and pieces. It's not regular. There's a lot of families that don't have that. And what you have there is really unique. And when you go through that adversity, you know, you can see that your family are thriving. And that's down to you and Tom. Well, we didn't for ages. Do you know what I mean? We didn't. Like, I sat on the couch from of course, like half yeah. nine in the morning till 10 to 3 till it was ready to collect them again from school. You yeah. know what I mean? But um, yeah, I definitely do feel that this has opened up, a, you know, a door for me to, to probably walk through and keep going. You know what I mean? And bring the lads with me, obviously. So my target this week is two pounds. But really, my target is to lose more weight than Tom. <laughs> For over 25 years, Irish waistlines have been expanding. Hot belly, beer gut, or spare tyre, the reality is this fat carried around our midriff is killing us. Heart disease, high blood pressure, and type 2 diabetes, we've heard all the warnings, but what many of us aren't aware of is the very real link between fat and cancer. We have consistent, robust, and what we consider to be convincing scientific evidence that body fat, and especially this belly fat, increases the risk of over 10 different cancers. If we look, for example, at breast cancer, we know from very large epidemiological studies that women who gain about a stone and a half from the time they're 18 to midlife double their risk of developing breast cancer in the postmenopausal setting. Professor John Reynolds and his team at St. James's Hospital in Dublin have been examining this link between cancer and obesity. As an esophageal cancer surgeon, Professor Reynolds noticed an alarming trend in the patients he was treating. And on examining the records of 800 cancer cases, he discovered that 82% of these patients were overweight or obese prior to developing cancer. Really what we're showing is that cancer is unfortunately something else that has to be added to the list of major, very major health problems associated with obesity. Everything to do with having a lot of belly fat and relating it to cancer is in one direction. It promotes everything that defines a cancer. Nothing good about it. Nutritional scientist Dr Aoife Ryan has been working closely with the St James's team to better understand the alarming impact of fat on our bodies. It's not just sitting there insulating our body and perhaps annoying us that we can't fit into our favourite pair of jeans. It's actually much more than just an energy store. It's actually quite a metabolically active tissue. The active fat around our midriffs is probably the single most important factor in the connection between obesity and cancer. Every day, our bodies have damaged cells, old cells, but in a healthy person, we're able to keep those damaged cells in check. We program their death and we, we kill off those cells. And what happens in, in someone who goes on to develop cancer is that these damaged cells are given an opportunity to rapidly divide and take hold and form a tumor. We know from extensive laboratory research that's been done over the last 10 years that the hormones that central fat and belly fat can produce can encourage that process of allowing abnormal cells to divide and to replicate and to take hold in the body. But it's not all bad news. There is so much you can do to reduce your own individual risk of cancer. If everybody in the world drops their BMI by 1%, we would prevent up to 100,000 cases of cancer every year. That's a very powerful message that we can actually do something about this. Join us after the break when there's heartbreak for John and hysteria for a rose of chili. But first, it's time for tonight's ad break challenge. There's no excuses, and tonight it's a calf raise. Take a chair or a wall for balance. Back nice and straight, onto your tippy toes and back down. Off the couch, here we go. Three, two, one, and go. Come on, up you get. <laughs> Harry's even doing the look. Come on, Sambo, don't let me down. I wonder if I, if I hold Harry, do I get extra points for extra weight? Let there me. you go. And three. Two and one, shake it out. Oh, Burn. oh my god! <laughs> you know those skinny jeans that you've been hiding at the back of your wardrobe? Well, now's the time. Get out, get active, it's your move. Don't forget to send us in your videos, just like Keith and Katie and recent Lily May. You didn't have water bottles, but we're using our runners. Keep moving. Affirmation transformation. Well done, guys. The man himself might be on sick leave, but Dan's plan is still a force to be reckoned with. Last week, we met the O'Brien's Fat Boys. We are following Dan the Man! The walkers of Dublin GAA Club Ballyboden St. Enda's are also following Dan's plan. And this week, they're joined by a special guest to keep them motivated. And one of Dan's followers can't wait to talk to the man himself. Oh, sorry, Gabby. How's it going, Dan? Good, good. Good to meet you too, pal. So you're following the plan, the Dan plan, as they call it. Dan plan, I'm trying my best. 49-year-old Gabby Harding has a lot in common with Dan. Both come from sporting backgrounds, and like Dan, Gabby lost his father when he was just a young child. My dad died when I was very young. We were on holidays in the Canary Islands the second morning we were there. My mum woke up and he was dead in the bed beside her. My mum died two years ago after a standard hip operation. Went very wrong. Thinking about that and, and my dad. 
I suppose I, I, I miss them both, you know, every day. Um, and it's not something that I want my children to go through when they're young. Carry on my wayward son. So with the support of his club, Gabby's decided it's time to make a change. And his family are on board with the plan too. Dan's the man for me. He said straight away the night and we both said it together. You know, we're saying, yeah, he's definitely who he's going to follow. It's very difficult to follow an exercise regime with four children. I slag him a lot, like every day, just to motivate him a bit. And it's on the Ballyboden pitch, both as a player and a juvenile coach, that Gabby is most motivated. Although his wife, Zelda, isn't 100% convinced of the benefits. We lost the Gaelic, but he was in goal. It's not really exercise, you're just standing there jumping around sometimes. Ooh, tell that to Stephen Cluxton, if you dare. Thank you. But the results of Gabby's improved fitness levels speak for themselves. I'm down 17 pounds in four weeks. They've never been like that before. What do you think about this? <laughs> we're delighted here now. We're all, he's having great fun with the kids over it and they're slagging him and they're really delighted. They wouldn't tell him how proud they are of him. Even Gabby's colleagues have started to see a new man coming to work. Yeah, I've worked with Gabby for a long time and he was always relatively known as a cookie monster. He'll, he'll tell you lies, that fella. Yeah, Gabby has been coming in there every morning and having his proper oats and all seeds and all sorts and he tries to uh, push that onto uh, the rest of us here that are putting on a little bit of weight. But it's from the Ballyboden OT group that Gabby has drawn the greatest inspiration. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, without fail, he's gone. He hasn't missed one night yet. And he's giving it back in spades. The motivation he has for himself is just brilliant. And it, he's just breathing it through everybody now. I was next to get the stone after Gabby. And I'm, it's from looking at him running ahead of me and going, I'm not letting him get out of my sight. So it's been brilliant. Like. If the group wasn't there, I wouldn't be doing it. I wouldn't be down 17 pounds because of them. I'm just I'm so thankful. If you follow that plan, you're, you're, come here, you're going to smash it big time. OK, lads, this is how we do it. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. It's the dance sensation that's sweeping the nation, as stars and schools have joined me on one of our most successful campaigns ever. It's Your Move, a dance fitness workout designed for teenage girls. Soccer ace Stephanie Roach, top model Roz Purcell, GAA all-star Anna Geary and myself all went back to our old schools to learn a new step of the routine each week. And for the last month in hundreds of schools, you've taken to the floor and rocked out to those moves. In PE classes and community halls up and down the country, you have raised the bar higher than we ever expected. Your response has been phenomenal. And we're not finished yet. Tonight, it's time to learn the fifth and final step of our mega routine. It's your move! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 2014, Rose of Tralee is... Rio Walsh! This week, Maria Walsh is ditching her crown to reveal the final step of our dance routine alongside her old school presentation college headfirt in County Galway. Dare I ask, are you excited? Are you ready to dance? And actually, are we going to be better than the rest of the schools? With Raw Edge crew showing how it's done, Maria and the girls get cracking on their fancy footwork. We're here today, everybody really enjoyed what they're doing. They've enjoyed it the last few weeks. Huge energy involved. I mean, apart from the time they spent practicing in school, they're at it at home as well. So, I mean, all in all, it's been very successful. We are definitely giving them lifelong skills and it's given them uh, an insight how they can enjoy sport, enjoy a bit of exercise and have fun with it. It's great to get together with all my friends and do this because some of them don't do dance at all. Some do football, some do uh, swimming, and then some just don't do anything whatsoever. So it's great for us to all come together and just do dance. Is it a good workout? I know you probably can't tell from my sweaty looks, but yes, it is. A couple of moves, I was like, I don't even know if my body can physically do this. Uh, but it is, you feel, you feel energetic as soon as you don't. You want to learn more dance moves. Uh, having Marie Walsh back is just it's so much fun. It's just so great. And this gang absolutely own the floor with this final step. Next week, all five schools and their famous class pupils will come together to perform the complete routine. And we want you to be a part of it. So get your groove on and send us in your videos to make sure your school features in the official It's Your Move dance video. Log on to rte.ie forward slash OT to check out the steps so far and get practicing before the big reveal next week. After losing an amazing eight pounds last week, news of John's success on the scales heads back to Belmullet in County Mayo. John is doing great in Operation Transformation. We're all behind him here in Belmullet. I think John is doing very well. We're so proud of him. Uh, we're supporting him all the way. Everyone's rooting for John. He's a lovely man and we just want to see him reach his goals. And not too far away in Bangareris, where John grew up, there's even more support for the local hero. 
Like this is what operational situation is about. They're all out walking, it's pitch dark, it's windy, it's raining. You know, 70 people got off their ass and out tonight. These people I grew up with, people that helped me when I was growing up here. Once you come to us, you know, you'll never be found wanting, you'll never be left on your own. They'll always back you up, they'll always support you, you know. Very proud of them. 100% behind them, the people is. It's fantastic. He's definitely a banger man through and through. While he's back in Bangareras, John takes time to revisit his family home, where he raised his younger brothers after the early deaths of their parents. This is my home. Um, this is where I grew up. This is where I left. This is where I came back to Tarea, my brothers. Uh, this is where I got married from. And um, I would be home for the... It's, um, that's full of memory of it, you know. Good memories. You have Dad, Alan, myself, the handsome one. You have Mum, the dainty lady, and you have uh, Declan and Brendan. My memories of the house, it was just, even with, like when Mum and Dad was alive and then John took over the reins, it was always a happy house. He was such good fun and he always kept the spirits up and he'd always be trying new foods on us, which we didn't mind. And uh, no, it was a great house to grow up in and you couldn't be raised by a nicer person. And now it's Declan's turn to look out for his big brother, John. You know, we've been to a fair bit together and He's done a lot for us, so it's nice to be kind of helping him out and running and walking with him and doing the exercise with him and paying him back in some form. So, you know, he's benefiting from it now and he looks great. You know, the redness in the face is gone. Uh, the legs, like, you can see his ankles again. And he bought three new shirts in October and now they're too big for him. So he's doing great. Eight pounds last week. Can John keep the momentum going? Good luck. Up you get. John, last week you were 20 stone nine pounds. Your target was to lose three pounds. And today, you weigh 20 stone, 10 and a half pounds. So that is a weight gain of one and a half pounds. What stood out this week for me looking at you was I was looking at all the people in Belmullet and in Bangor and everything and everyone, they're rooting for you. They see you as one of their own. You're very much part of the community and they all describe what a great guy you are and how happy you are. And then I saw you in your parents' family home and the sadness that was there. And it strikes me that the happiness thing is a persona. I think you are the happy guy. You are fun Bobby, but you're not. And my feeling is there is a fundamental disconnect in you, John, between how you actually feel and what you show the world, including us here. I think when you are disconnected, there's an awful lot of work that goes into pushing down those emotions you're actually feeling to maintain the front. And I think in order to push it all down, you lean on food and you lean on drink. What's going on there now? I don't know, it's just everything. Hmm? Just everything, letting people down. It's almost like an iceberg, like what we see is really at the top, but there's so much going on underneath. I don't know, from the time when we were past away, you know, I had to probably put up a screen for the lads and um, make sure they were okay and get them over the line and be happy and chirpy for them. And I invest a lot of time in that and a lot of time in my job and I've invested very little time myself. I think like a lot of people, when they put energy into the front and not into their real self, they, they really struggle. You need to put yourself first. If you don't, the road is going to run out for you very fast. With just two weeks to go, John is devastated. Now it will take a major intervention by the experts to save John's operation transformation. We're back tomorrow night at 8.30 when I'll be taking the plunge in our Leader versus Experts Challenge. Come on, Catherine, you're not doing any work. Cheek him. But now it's your move. Come join in the group workout directly after the show on RTE Player. Join Carl and the leaders for our weekly workout on RTE Player now. Best of luck. Kyle has some killer core training in tonight's live workout, so you can join in with the leaders live now on the RTE player. As always, there's more on rte.ie forward slash o2. Next tonight, here on more, the news and weather.